Hello, my name is Mark. I'm 25 and I live in Oregon. I love to go visit my grandpa. He lives, not, he lives not too far from the famous park, Crater Lake. It's only like a 45 minute hike to Crater Lake. So I go ahead and call my grandpa up and tell him that I'm going to come up for a few days and take some pictures of the lake and whatnot. I says to him, I will be in it later in the afternoon. Now as I'm packing my backpack, I'm sure to pack my locator transponder my multi-tool kit, some food, rations, protein bars, machete, lantern, and flashlight. I pull up to my grandpa's house, my Jeep Grand Cherokee lifted with some big mud tires painted, camo colors, and dual exhaust. My grandpa's sitting on the porch, smoking a pipe and drinking his drink. Did you bring my favorite bottle? He shouts over the loud noise of the truck and my radio. Yes, Grandpa, I brought your bottle of Jameson. Ah, thank you now there, Sonny. Now go ahead and pour me a glass. I got something I gotta tell you before you go ahead up there yonder to Crater Lake. Me and my Grandpa were close and shared traditions. I was happy to visit him regularly and then go hiking. It not only saved me on lodging, but it helped me understand more about my Grandpa and the way he lived his life. I was always able to learn something the opportunity to confide in him while spending time with him. He was mostly pleased with me and appreciated my company, at least I thought so. I grabbed two shot glasses, poured us a drink, and sat next to my grandpa on the porch. Now, I've been hearing across, talk across the CB radio that there's been a few hikers that have come up missing. And uh, they wanted to keep it hush-hush on the CB radio, not let it out to the public. And only the, some of the special local patrol people know about it. But the only thing they found were these people's boots and their clothing and nothing else. Don't you think that's strange? Well, I reckon you should stay a while and find out more before you head off yonder and take pictures of Crater Lake down there. I just don't want you to go down there. Please don't go. I know the risks. When I took camping, I was fine. I said... Pop pop, it's gonna be great. You gotta believe me, it's just gonna be fantastic, I tell you. Then I says, I'm sorry, I gotta go down there. You know, I've been down there a thousand times when I was a little kid and I came back every single time, alright. I know, I know, but it's just different this time, you know. I just feel like there's something strange going on, you know. I just can't put my finger on it. Just just take my gun just in case. Seriously, Pop Pop. Yes, take my Colt 45 with you here. I already have my 22. All right, I know. Just, just take it for extra protection, all right? So I go ahead and put it in my backpack along with a few more rounds. I go to the bathroom real quick, and I see my grandpa looking over my map. So that's where you're going, huh? Yeah, that's where I'm going, Grandpa. Wait, let me go ahead and make a copy of that map, just in case. But why, Grandpa, why? Why do you want to make a copy of that map? Just because, you know, you never know can be too careful in this world, son. You know, I'd be worried sick if I didn't hear back from you and didn't have any way to find you. He makes a scan of the map and prints it out. I'm getting kind of worried. I'm going to tell my Grandpa that... You know, if I'm not back by the 15th and it's the 16th, you know, he better send a search team, you know, just in case. Thanks for letting me know, Sonny Boy. I'll go ahead and do that. You know, if you're not back by the 16th, I'll send somebody out for you. And then I head out the back gate. I have this feeling of excitement, but also this feeling of something different, something I've never felt before. When heading out into the woods, I've been out there a thousand times. I don't know. Maybe it's just my stomach. Maybe I'm just anxious. Maybe I'm just a little queasy. I figure I might as well just go ahead and eat something. So I pull out a Granny Smith apple out of my bag, bite down on it. It's now about 6.30. It's a little dark, and I've just begun. I go ahead and pull out my lantern through the forest with the bucks chirping and whatnot. Just because I go camping doesn't mean I'm fine with snakes and other creepy crawlers. I mean... I just don't like them. I just don't like them. I don't like them at all. As I keep walking through the forest, I'm thinking, I hope I don't run into snakes or big spiders on the way. Boy, I tell you, I've seen some things in these woods. You've know, always seen some different bugs than you normally see in the city. It's some that can make your skin crawl. 
they walk, fiddle around. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. They just flutter around me. I don't know. As I'm walking along, I come along a path. Big marble stone with golden lettering pointing directions. I think. I know. I know. Go to the left. Go to Crater Lake. Go to the right. Go see some more general fruitful floral areas like berries and other edible fruit. A few hours pass and I was a little hungry so I, I went to the right side now mind you I'm still thinking about I'm thinking about what my grandpa had told me about the hikers gone missing. It's not resting all of my attention but it's lingering there in the back of my mind. I marked down where I've been on my map, only five miles towards the blueberries and raspberries. I think about how good them berries will be this time of year. It's been a while since I've had these fresh berries. As I'm approaching what I think is natural foliage, little did I realize that I've stumbled on a mini cannabis grow. Now, I'm not one to stumble on herbal blessings and not take advantage of the opportunity. I swiftly clip a little sweet smelling bud and go on my merry way. I head out the way I came and go in a different direction and to mark it on the map for sure. As I'm making my way through the forest, I hear some ATBs off in the distance. I don't want any trouble. I better get out of here as quickly as possible. As I'm running, I see an abandoned ranger station. As I head that way, I'm hearing less and less of the ATVs. My heart rate starts to drop, and I can ease my guard a little bit. As I'm walking, I can see the outline of the tower. As I get there, I have to kick in the door just to get in and look around, and there's some cobwebs on an old CB radio. I flick the switch, and it turns on. As I get to the headset, I remember my grandpa's radio frequency. 45645. I press the button and say, Hey, Grandpa, it's me, over. It's me, Mark, over. Hey there, Mark. Is uh, is that you? Uh, where are you? I'm at the old abandoned ranger station. I think I'm going to stay here for the night. All right. But you take care. I'll talk to you in the morning. Over and out. I pull out my lantern and keep it low as to not attract any unwanted guests. And I'm looking around and I see a few filing cabinets. So I go ahead and open one up. And it's case files from the 1930s and 40s. There's hundreds of them. I'm going through them and all I can think is there's something that's got to be going on here. I'm going to figure it out. But for some reason, I feel unusually tired. I glance around the room, and I notice there's a cot. I pull it out, and I fall fast asleep. I wake up bright and early, make my instant coffee, and radio with my grandpa. He says, Hello there, Sonny. How's the weather up there in the tower today? Oh, not too bad. A little cold, I say. Are you heading down to the watchtower today? Yes, grandpa. I'm going to continue my hike. It's just the second day of five. I know. Stay safe out there. I'll try. I'm feeling adventurous. I had a great rest, so I stray from the trail for a little while and head towards the cliffs. My grandpa says to never take shortcuts in life, but I should be fine. I cut through this clearing while hiking, right? I mean, it should save me some time. I've got a lot of time since if I do this, it'll save me half the day. So I check my canteen. It's full. I check my other canteen, it's full. Well, let's go ahead and get to it then. I'm walking around the cliffs thinking, what a beautiful scene. I mean, it's just tremendous. It's just really beautiful. So I snap a few photos. The vast openness of it all. I'm taken back by the simple beauty. It's really, really terrific. I mean, I'm glad I took the time out of my way to head out this way through the shortcut. Anyway, I linger over for 30 minutes and head down the cliff to go back to normal ground. As I'm walking down, I see a pair of sweatpants and track shoes. I also see some socks over there as 
as to be dry. My first reaction to glance around and I thought, what the heck? Uh, I thought I was the only one out here for the most part. I didn't hear anything but those ATVs the other day. I think to myself, why are there be random clothes here? There's some of those hikers that are gone. They're going naked adventures or something. Wait, don't tell me. They're doing that honky tonk, whoop de whoop. You know, the hanky panky. Hikers have been known to go out and come out here and engage in relations, but I've never stumbled on it before. I look around and I say, hello, hello. I'll go check the pockets of the clothes lying on the, and I found a wallet and a keychain and a few car keys. And I checked the wallet, Polly Walsh. That's just a town over from where I live. How peculiar. But suddenly I feel nauseous, like I'm going to barf. But I managed to hold it in. I slowly back away, then I accidentally trip and fall. Ah! Oh, dang, that smarts. What the heck did I trip over? I look over and see some sort of circular hatch, like the kind you've seen on a submarine. So I say, well, I guess I'll see what's going on over here. This is very interesting. Never seen anything like this in the forest before. So I guess I'll give it a twist. Air comes rushing out. I says, whoa, there's lights that leads down. That's very strange. I'm going down, going down. It seems to be for five minutes. I finally hit the floor. Then I turn around and I start walking down the hall. There's these glass windows. As I'm looking in the window, a hybrid looking lizard man creature grabs my shoulder and says, do not worry, you're not for dinner. You're going to be on display. I glance and notice what seems to be a host of missing hikers. I'm startled at first, but then I seem to be in a state of tranquility and peace for some reason. I feel more drowsy and I fall asleep. And it seems like a day later when I come to, I find myself in this enclosure. Sure enough, just like the hybrid looking lizard said. For some reason, I can't move. I'm stuck. I can't seem to get out of here. There's a strange alluring mirror. I see, I see. I'm transfixed. I don't know how to describe it. I'm transfixed on an object. And for some reason, I feel loneliness. I feel darkness. I feel cold. It seems like I'm the only one in this room that is engulfed by loneliness and darkness. And that I can't seem to glance away. I seem to be stuck in the same reality, but only experiencing a sliver of it. I'm plunging into the parts of my life that I fear the most. I'm swimming in the world of my fears. I'm surrounded by loneliness and darkness. That's when I hear the half-man, half-lizard Ah, looks like you found my vortex mirror. That device took me a while to build. All these people here that you saw, they are themselves trapped in the vortex you see. He says, he brushes his chin with his reptilian fingers. This vortex mirror shows you your fears. You can either be trapped by them, or you can face it. I have yet to see someone who has defeated the vortex mirror. But you seem more strong-minded than these other lesser beings. Do you have what it takes to face your fears? See? The rules are simple here. You can leave whenever you want. But you can't take your fears with you. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the very first episode of Dark Horse Tales. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. More tales coming soon.